event. Enemies were up in up. They were ready. They had everything to attack. Camp of Abba Abdullah, few in number. How did they approach it? Look at these practical steps. Remind yourselves with it now and then when you go through issues in your life. The first approach of Abba Abdullah was what? Allujuu ila al-ibada. Inda muajahat al-hada. Abba Abdullah resulted to the worship of Allah. That was his first approach. Enemies were coming. Best way to respond to them and to prepare myself to tackle this challenge is ibadah. Is to worship Allah in whatever form one is able to do. Today when I and you go through challenges, we tend to forget the worship of Allah. We only go later to knock the door of Allah. No. Imam Hussein is on the other way around. He quickly, immediately, throughout his journey, succumbed to the worship of Allah. And hence we have a beautiful tradition from our beloved first Imam that whenever Amirul Mu'mineen faced a challenge, whatever the challenge might be, he would offer at least two rak'at of salat. Don't undermine ibadah when you are faced with challenges. It may be work-related challenge. It may be any other challenge. Invest your times in worshiping Allah when you go through challenges. It's better than talking to people and keep talking and talking and keep complaining and complaining. And we have tradition from our beloved fourth imam where he beautifully also mentioned the best way to approach every single challenge in life is to go and knock the door of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Abu Abdullah, you know very well, my dear brothers and sisters, they did not give miss to Salatul Layl. If you know it, this is not a new thing. We all know this, but we need to remind ourselves. We tend to forget. We tend to forget. They did not give mess to Salatul Layl. You want to handle your issue by yourself? You will break apart. You can't. Human beings, yes, they can help you, but they've got limitation. Connect with the unlimited. If of Ashura, the day when the enemies wanted to attack, and Abba Abdullah sent messengers to them, go tell them to wait for us until tomorrow. What were they doing? They were worshipping Allah in the darkness of the night in Karbala. Mu'minin and Mu'minat. Lovers and followers of Allah. Learn to establish Salatul Layl. If you have not yet started, Wallahi, learn to start. You will then know the secret of existence. Don't waste time. Life, very short. And full of troubles. Full of troubles. Without God, we can't. Two. Imam al Hussein on the day of Ashura began defending after dua. He made dua, he supplicated. We all sitting here, we have different ways of beginning our days. There are people, they begin their days when they smell beautiful flower, a flower they love. They smell it. They feel good. Nothing wrong is excellent. There are people when they kiss their sons and daughters, they feel good and they begin their days. But there are those, they listen to music. They say, when I listen to this particular music, I feel good and I know my days will be okay. There are people like that. 
There is Islam comes with and say, the best way to prepare your day and everything is dua. Ilahi anta thikati fi kulli karba. Abba Abdullah made this dua. On the 10th day of Ashura, before he granted permission to his companions to go out and fight. Anta thikati fi kulli karba. Wa rajai fi kulli shidda. You are my trustworthy, ya Allah, in every difficulty. And you are my hope in every pain. What lesson do you get from that? Don't begin your day without du'a. Don't just wake up and go. Yes, you do your fajr salat, I agree. Don't go out without du'a. Make it a norm in your house. Make it a culture in your house. Du'a. Oh no, you face with these challenges. Exams. Anxiety. Work anxiety. Community problems. Commun yes, go have those meetings. Have those meetings. They are okay. Raise up your hand. Ask Allah. Who else will send down tranquility in your heart than Allah? Make dua. Aba Abdullah made dua. And you know, we discussed dua before here. We've got through dua, al dua al hakiki. It is when you have this al inkita al kulli ilallah. When you've got this unconditional attention to Allah when you ask Allah. So the second approach of Imam al Hussein is dua. Make dua in your own language, no problem. In English, make dua. Kujarati make dua, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't forget dua when you are in trouble. Number three, approach of Imam Hussein. Kathratu dhikrillah. Throughout the battle, you would hear Imam al Hussein, according to narrators, remembering Allah, dhikr. Dhikr is different from dua. Yes, dua can be a form of dhikr to some extent. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Hasbun Allah wa nima al wakil. You know, mu'mineen al mu'mila, let your tongue get used to dhikr. What is dhikr? Al-intima'u ilallah. It's having sense of belonging to Allah. That is dhikr. Do are you asking because you're in trouble, isn't it? But now I want to demonstrate sense of belonging to Allah. That is what dhikr is all about. How many of us do dhikr now and then in our life? Asbunallah wa nimalaki. Even you are at work, secretly, asbunallah wa nimalaki. When your tongue gets used to this dhikr of Allah, it then resists haram. It resists it. By the time you realize, it stays away from haram. Kathratu zikrillah. Imam al Hussein did zikr. He would take a body, dropping the body, coming back for the other body. He was remembering Almighty Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And you remember that tradition, uh, that ayah. Allah says, remember me, I remember you. Isn't it? And that beautiful tradition of the Holy Prophet. What does it mean to say, remember me, I remember you? So remember me above the earth. I remember you inside the earth, isn't it? Remember me here on this, you know, when you go inside, I'll remember you. Then he says, no, remember me in easiness, I'll remember you in difficulties. Now it's easy for you. Things are going well. MashaAllah. Remember Allah. Aspanallah. Walimulakillah. Go work. Make hard work. Work. Have meetings. But don't forget Allah. We need Allah. We need Him. Remember me in easiness. I will remember you in difficulties. Not only when you are in difficulties, remember Allah. No, keep remembering Allah. La hawla la quwwata illa billah. A'udhu billah min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Ilahi ridam bi qadr wa taslim al and then the last part of the tradition is to remember me by showing mercy to people. I will remember you by showing mercy to you. So Abba Abdullah approached Karbala by remembering Allah. His next approach as well is the common one which we discussed before here. Salat. Daily prayers. People don't bother about Salat sometimes. Wallah. Wallah. Abu 
Karbala was difficult. But he made sure they prayed Salah. The Zuhur was faithful. You see this? It's to inspire us with the understanding that you can only approach challenges when you seek divine intervention. These daily prayers you do, don't undermine it. Me'rajul mu'min, isn't it? Qurbanu kulli taqi Rasulullah. It makes one soul to ascend to Allah. Don't joke with your soul, with your asr, with your with your shah, with your shah. Look at companions of Abu Abdullah. They were competing to pray their last salat behind Imam Nusra. It's not for the sake of doing it. It's to tell us that, you know, Habibi, when you are in problems, when you are in challenges, this daily salat you do will come and help you. And the beauty about the salat of Karbala is also, it was on time. It was congregational and it was public. Don't give congregational prayers a miss if you can. If you can't, do it in the house in Jamaat. Learn from Imam al Hussein. And the next approach of Imam Hussein was what? He psychologically prepared his camp for the tragedy. He prepared it all. So get ready. Life can turn around. Get ready. We saw it in Corona. Life turned around for people. We're sitting here in the mosque. How many people don't, we lost? They died out of Corona here. Life can turn around for you anytime. Wallahi. You plan and he plans. And he's the best of the planners, isn't it? So about Abdullah Yul Hussein alayhi salam psychologically prepared them. But prepare for this, brother. Prepare for this, Islam. It is the sunnah of life. First what he did, he looked at Sayyidah Zainab and he prepared her psychologically. And then he looked at his companions and he prepared them psychologically. What did he say to Sayyidah Zainab? Ista'iddi lil bala. Wa'alami anna ahla al-ardi yamutu wa ala sama la yabku. He said, oh my dear sister, prepare for the tragedy. Prepare Zainab. Note that those on earth will perish. They will die. Even those in heaven will not remain forever. He prepared them mentally. Then he looked at his companions. Ista'iddu lil bala. Oh my companions, prepare for the tragedy. Wa'lamu. Not that. Anna Allah hamikum. Allah will protect you. Wa munjikum. And he will salvage you. And he will make sure you have good energy. So here, Abu Abdullah is to prepare us to say what? Challenges in life are sunnah 